Hello everybody. How's your week been? Have you been busy? I've been quite busy doing some painting. I've not quite finished the one behind me yet. Have you been doing anything like that? Maybe you've been on the computer playing games. Maybe you've been watching television or going outside to meet other people, socially distanced of course, or uh, maybe you've been doing some schoolwork. I wonder what you've been doing. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. He's called UK and he lives in my house. Here he is. He's getting quite excited as the holiday months are coming soon and he might get to go to lots of different countries. He says he's looking forward to the sun. Uh-oh, he's just heard the bad news. He's been put on furlough and won't be going to any other country this year. This, of course, is a UK passport. If you look at the front of your passport, it tells you which country you belong to. You may have a passport from a different country and it will have your name, the name of that country in the front. Why is the United Kingdom called that? A long time ago, Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland were different countries and had their own kings and queens. And then they joined together or united to form the United Kingdom with one king or queen. Now, why is it called a kingdom? Well, the first part of the word gives us a clue. It's a country where there's a king or in our case, a queen, Queen Elizabeth. The queen is not only the ruler of the country, but of its people. Today she's just a figurehead and the real work is done in Parliament. In Mark's Gospel, we've been hearing about Jesus speaking to the people and explaining things to his disciples. Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of God and what it was like. So what is the kingdom of God like? Here is a simple illustration. The kingdom of God is not like the United Kingdom. It doesn't have borders and you can't go there on holiday. You can't see it, that it is the place where God reigns throughout the world. You don't need a passport to get in, but you are an automatic member when you come to know and love the Lord Jesus. In today's story, in Mark's Gospel, Jesus was teaching his disciples about the kingdom of God and what it was like. He taught them with pictures of ideas and examples from their own lives that they would understand. We call them parables. Today we're going to hear about three parables or illustrations that Jesus taught his disciples. Here is illustration number one. Imagine going into a very dark room and closing the door. We can't see anything, even with your eyes wide open. We need a light to show us what is there. Now, most of these types of light have not been, had not been invented in Jesus' time, but the idea is just the same. This is what Jesus actually said. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bowl or under a bed. Instead, he puts it where it gives light for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. What Jesus was saying was that in God's kingdom, we are given Jesus light and wherever we go in this world, we should shine for him by the things we do and say so that others can see Jesus shining through us. We've all been given special gifts from God. We might be good at singing or playing an instrument or speaking to others or many other things. God wants us to use the gifts he has given to us to help others and shine for him and not hide him away. 
them away. So here we have it. Are you shining for Jesus today? The next illustration is about the farmer sowing the seed. Jesus talked about a farmer sowing his seeds. He was in his field and hiding them in the earth and going away to do other things. He didn't go back and look at them every day to see if they were still there. He left everything to God. When the time came, the seeds grew and became ripe and ready for harvesting. They grew with God's help alone. We can grow as Christians to be more like Jesus. Here are some ways to help us grow. By reading the Bible, we can learn how to be more like Jesus and follow God's rules and the things that he said to other people. By praying and asking for God's help. By praising God and thanking him for all the good things he gives us. And by learning from other older Christians about God and about Jesus. So this is our second illustration. Growing more like Jesus. Are you growing more like Jesus? Now we have the two illustrations. Do you remember the first one? Shining for Jesus. And the second one, growing more like Jesus. And here's the third one. Jesus talked about a tiny mustard seed. The mustard seed is a very, very small seed. And when you plant it, you might expect it to grow into a small plant. But does it? No, it grows into a tall tree. Wow! That's amazing, isn't it? Jesus is telling us that even if we are young or feel we have just a little faith, Jesus can still do amazing things with us. Just imagine the God of heaven can take you and use you, but you need to let him do that. Wow. God can use even me. So there we have it. Three of the stories are parables that Jesus taught his disciples about the kingdom of God and what it was like. Their future task was to go and tell others so that his kingdom would grow and grow. And that has been the task of Christians throughout the generations. And we're still doing this today. So let's see if we can remember the three things. The first illustration, remember the light? Are we shining for Jesus? Do other people know Jesus because we are doing things that Jesus would do? Are we growing more like Jesus by praying, by reading our Bibles? Wow, God can use me. Are you letting God use you? I thought we could even make it more simple by saying it in three words. And here they are. Do we shine? Are we growing? Are we letting God use you or use me? Jesus gives us many more illustrations throughout the gospel, but I think that is enough for today. We're going to sing your song and it's called Christ Be Our Light and we're asking Jesus to come into our lives and shine in our lives so that we can shine for him. Let's remember, shine for Jesus, grow and ask Jesus to use me.